chapter ten of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva triton of the minnows mr janey's breakfast guests had gone and having seen the last of the country wagons depart he went into the office next to the smoking-room where cornelius bent sat awaiting him curtis janey brought a sheaf of telegrams and letters which he laid on the desk then he opened a humidor offering his guest a cigar took one himself and sat down well what did you hear asked general bent janey took a puff or two at his cigar then frowned at the papers on the table a great deal he muttered both bad and good i have here reports for the whole week from our men in denver pueblo kenny and sawatch the pressure from abington and the chicago in utah has finally brought noakes into line it was something of a job for he's tied up in one of ray's development companies and it has cost some money abington had to give him a big bonus for the stock in the denver and western collins and hardy came around all right but it only remains to put the screws on to make ray show his hand have you decided on that asked the general no i haven't curtis janey took up a letter which he had separated from the others you remember we thought his planning this new line to pueblo was financial suicide and that uh, if we gave ray enough rope he'd hang himself we didn't even see the use of throwing the usual impediments in the way bent nodded well they're building it it's only a bluff i'm not so sure my last reports show that the money is in the treasury some of it is raised but most of it has come from utah california and washington even the denver and california is backing the whole project and tent towns are springing up along the line of the survey those people out there believe in ray and are following him like sheep they wouldn't follow him long if we found a way to stop him said the general grimly i've seen those stampedes before but they always come to an end what does lamson report the denver and california seems set on this thing the more so as it promises to be a success without much help from them general bent got up and paced the floor with quick nervous strides why curtis he said you seem to see unusual trouble in the way the case presents no greater difficulties than the seamuller plant did or the myers and ought but we got them both in the end there is a difference where the man himself he'll fight to the last ditch that jaw wasn't given him altogether as an ornament i'm sorry we can't find his weak point a man who looks as far ahead as he does is a good one to tie to but he may not want any strings on him the other night at dinner at my house he was boasting of his independence he didn't know how hot it made me yes he did that's why he did it he said the same thing here yesterday but i wasn't deceived it was all a part of his game i think in a game of bluff he can make old gamesters like you and me sit up and do some guessing janey knocked the ash from his cigar and laughed cornelius our fine scheme hasn't worked out not so far when ray first came in the office you sized him up as a social climber but if you think we are going to bewilder him by our clubs the opera and social connections you're reckoning without your host general bent smiled tolerantly he assimilates surprisingly well he said with a reflective nod for all his western manner he never gives the impression of being ill at ease i'll say that for him why do you know i strolled in on caroline the other afternoon on my way uptown and found him teaching her how to play pinochle mrs rumpson yes she'll be making him the rage before the winter is out but he takes it all as a matter of course indeed i think he fancies himself our equal in any matter 
he paused and then rose but he must prove that the amalgamated must own that smelter oh yes said janey following him with his eyes it will of course we can't have him underbidding us it's lucky he hasn't tried it yet but that's the danger from a man with both ability and ambition and we can't run the risk of letting him get too far there was a silence of some moments which cornelius bent improved by running over the correspondence when he had finished he tossed the letters abruptly on the table and walked to the window poor court he muttered he lost us the whole thing i wonder what's the matter with that boy he always seems to miss it somehow i can never make a business man of him like you or myself or like jeff ray he's cost us a pretty penny growled janey the general still stood by the window his chin deep in his chest his long fingers twitching behind his back jeff ray must pay for that curtis if we can't beat him in one way we must choose another jeff ray stole the lone tree he trespassed on our property in the dead of the night did violence to one of our employees and bluffed court into signing that lease if there was any law in the state of colorado he'd be serving his term at canyon city but i'll get him yet i will by god if he'd come in this office now and hold you up for the money in your safe he'd be a thief what is the difference just this he was successful and he left no loose ends behind him i thought at times janey that you lack some interest in this fight why because i take the precaution to get all the information i can and because my information turns out to be unfavorable to our plans you want to crush ray very well i have no objections crush him if you can but it would hardly do to let him crush us bent turned and examined his host curiously then he laughed it wasn't pretty laughter and it cracked dryly like the sound of a creaking door upon my word curtis you amaze me he said very well put in janey coolly but think it over don't be hasty if he puts that road through and starts the game of underbidding on the raw product we'll be in for a long fight and an expensive one i don't think the company wants that now mcintyre doesn't i know and warrington as usual is for temporizing temporizing cornelius bent's jaws snapped viciously this is not a case where personal preferences can be considered there's a great principle involved are we going to let an upstart like jeff ray a petty real estate operator from an obscure western town come into our field with a few stolen millions and destroy the plans of an organized business which controls the output of practically all the great gold-producing states a company whose sound methods have brought order out of chaos have given employment to an army of people whose patents have simplified processes reduced the cost of production and kept the price of the metal where it is satisfactory both to the mines and the market are we going to see all this jeopardized by a wild catter a tin-horn gambler a fellow with neither decency nor moral principle temporize like warrington if you like but the board of the amalgamated must make a fight for the race smelter or accept my resignation bent stalked the floor swiftly biting off the ends of his sentences as though they were parts of ray's anatomy clenching his fingers as he might have done had they encircled ray's neck curtis janey followed him with his gaze his brows tangled and his lips compressed aware of the seriousness of the situation the resignation of cornelius bent from the board of the amalgamated was a contingency not for a moment to be considered that of course is impossible he said we're all behind you to a dollar if you take that stand but couldn't it be wise to have ray in and talk to him we might learn something that's not on the cards oh yes if you like growled the general but you're wasting time i've got my idea of what that property is worth i'll make him the offer 
if he refuses and his lower jaw worked forward it will be war to the last ditch curtis janey pressed a bell and a servant appeared has mr ray returned yes sir said the man tell him general bent would like to see him here the man departed and general bent with an effort relaxed the muscles of his face and sat both gentlemen looked up quickly when the servant returned a few moments later i delivered your message sir he said mr ray asked me to say that he is engaged at the present moment and will join you later general bent's brows drew together angrily but janey inquired suavely where did you find him carrie in the conservatory sir with mrs cheyne janey smiled but suppressed bent's sudden exclamation with a wave of the hand you may bring in the whiskey then tell him that general bent and i will await his convenience yes sir thank you sir confound his impudence muttered the general biting at his lip all for effect cornelius said janey that fellow is an artist he's saving his face for the ordeal let him save his neck sneered bent janey stretched his legs forward and smoked comfortably break it if you like cornelius he said i can't you know so long as he's my guest ray sauntered in some moments later accompanied by rita cheyne general bent looked up with a scowl which the lady's gay assurance failed to dismiss may i come in too she asked i'm wild to hear how big men talk business won't you let me cousin cornelius i'm positively thirsty for knowledge business knowledge you don't mind do you mr janey you can't be interested ray laughed i'm the original woolly western lamb being led to the shearing mrs cheyne the golden fleece she put in i know but i'm not going to allow it you're not going to let them are you jeff ray i never knew a lamb that had any opinions on the matter he said easily the general got to his feet testily rita this won't do at all we wanted to speak to ray privately oh you needn't mind me i'm positively bursting with other people's confidences but i'm really the soul of discretion please let me stay she went over to curtis janey and laid her hands on his shoulders appealingly i'll sell you jack-in-the-box if you will mr janey she said you know you've wanted that horse all season janey laughed that's a great temptation but this isn't my affair and he glanced at general bent who stood frowning at them from the window leave the room at once rita said the general sternly you're interfering here can't you see mrs cheyne dropped her hands oh if you take that tone of course she moved toward the door turning with her hand on the knob i think you're horrid both of you i hope your lamb turns out to be a lion and eats you up and with a laugh and a toss of her head she went out banging the door behind her jeff ray and curtis janey laughed but the frown on general bent's face had not relaxed for an instant when the door had closed he sat down in his chair again while janey offered cigars jeff took one with a sudden serious air meant perhaps as a tribute to the attitude and years of his fellow guest curtis janey looking from one to the other searched each face for signs of doubt or indetermination and found in each the same deeply set eyes straight brow firm thin mouth square jaw and heavy chin which he recognized as belonging to those of this world who know how to fight and who do not know when they are beaten ray's features were heavier the lines in the general's face more deeply bitten by the acid of time but their features were so much alike that had janey not known the thing was impossible it might have been easy to imagine some kind of collateral or even more intimate family relationship you asked me to come here said ray easily apologetic well, what can i do for you general bent bent's deeply set eyes were hidden under his bushy eyebrows but the lips which held his cigar were flickering in a smile yes he began with a slow distinct enunciation 
which ray recognized at once as belonging to his office downtown i thought we might talk a little business if mr janey doesn't object not in the least said janey but there's no reason why we shouldn't mix in a little of the old thorn and he handed the decanter to ray cornelius bent refused ray he went on we've been talking about your plant down in the valley from all we've been able to find out it's a pretty good proposition in a small way but the amalgamated reduction company has no special interest in acquiring it that mountain range in our judgment will never be a big producer the lone tree is the kind of an exception that one finds only once in a lifetime and yet we're running on full time said ray with an odd smile if the other mines keep up their promise we won't need to buy any more ore general the mountains of the west are full of holes that once were promising ray like notes of hand but they've long since gone to protest jeff's chin tipped upward the fraction of an inch i'm endorsing these notes general besides he added suavely you know i'm not over anxious to sell when i came into your office it was only with the hope that i might establish friendly relations that i'm glad to say i succeeded in doing your health mr janey general bent refused to be disarmed yes i know but friendship and business are two things commercially you are in the attitude of a rival of the company i represent of course opulently not a serious rival but one who must logically be considered in our plans we didn't like your building that smelter and you could have brought your ore at a fair price to one of our plants in pueblo or colorado springs yes but that interfered with my own plans said jeff and i have had them a long time it's a little late to talk about that assented bent the plant is there the mines are there and yes but i don't see how they need bother you most of the gold we send to market comes from the lone tree i haven't handled any ore below your prices not yet there was if possible the slightest accent on the last words but ray uttered them with a sweet complacency which failed to deceive this young fool was threatening actually threatening the mighty smelting trust it was so preposterous that general bent actually laughed a thing he seldom did below twenty-third street or when he talked business elsewhere no he said grimly i'm glad that didn't seem necessary it would have been a pity see here ray he leaned forward his face drawn in decisive lines let's get to the point we've both been dodging it very consistently for a month you've got some property that may be useful to us we've thought enough about it at least to make a few inquiries about the whole situation and about you we could take that plant under our own management and do a little better than you could i don't think the location really warrants it for the big mine may stop paying any day and the railroad facilities you'll admit are not the best but if you're willing to sell out at a moderate figure we might buy it or perhaps you'd like to come in with us and take stock in the company we think a good deal of your ability there isn't any doubt that you could make yourself useful to us if you chose thanks said jeff with a sip at his scotch and then looked out of the window he had caught the meaning of general bent's casual remark about the railroad facilities of course bent went on i don't care to show improper curiosity about your plans but if you are willing to meet me in a friendly spirit we might reach an agreement that would be profitable both to your companies and mine i'd rather think it was interest than curiosity said ray with a smile but unfortunately i haven't got any plans further than to get all the ore i can out of lone tree 
and to keep my works busy just now i'm pretty happy the way things are going i've screwed the lid down and i'm sitting on it and besides with one eye peeled for the fellow with the screwdriver cornelius bent controlled his anger with difficulty his equality with jeff as a guest of curtis janey gave ray some advantages the easy good nature with which he faced the situation and his amused indifference to the danger which threatened him put the burden of proof on the general who experienced the feelings of an emperor who has been jovially poked in the ribs by the least of his subjects this was les majeste ray was either a fool or a madman has it never occurred to you ray snapped bent that somebody might come along with an axe uh, no i hadn't thought of that he replied quietly well think it over it's worth your while is it a declaration of war oh no hastily merely a movement for peace ray took a few puffs at his cigar and looked from janey to the general like a man on whom some great truth had suddenly dawned i had no idea he said with a skilfully assumed expression of wonder that the amalgamated was so desperately anxious as this in drawing aside the curtain he had still managed to retain his tactical advantage both older men felt it bent more than janey because it was he who had shown their hand while ray's cards were still unread the natural response was tolerant amusement and both of them made it anxious laughed bent is the lion anxious when the wolf comes prowling in his jungle success has twisted your perspective my dear ray the amalgamated is not anxious it has however a natural interest in the financial health of its competitors but i'm not a competitor that's just the point i'm governed by your methods your plans your prices i've been pretty careful about that no sir i know better than to look for trouble with the amalgamated one moment ray put in janey we don't seem to be getting anywhere let's simplify matters we can get along without your plant but if we wanted to buy what would you want for it do you mean the smelter or all my interests in the valley asked ray quickly the smelter of course and the denver and sawatch railroad i don't care to sell i've got other interests my development company uh, the coal mines and lumber they're all a part of the same thing mr janey like the limbs of my body cut one off and i might bleed to death we could give you traffic agreements i'd rather not i'll sell but only as a whole gold mines coal lumber and all ray caught general bent's significant nod that is my last word gentlemen he concluded firmly there was a silence which cornelius bent broke at last and what is your figure mr ray he asked jeff ray reached for the matchbox slowly relit his cigar which emitted clouds of smoke through which presently came his reply you gentlemen have been kind to me here in new york i want you to know that i appreciate it you've shown me a side of life that i never knew existed i like the west but i like new york too i want to build a house and spend my winters here i wasn't figuring on doing that just yet but if you really want my interests i'll sell them to you without reservation every stick and stone of them for thirty millions thirty millions the voices of both men sounded as one janey's frankly incredulous bent's satirical and vastly unpleasant thirty millions bent repeated with a sneer dollars or cents mr ray jeff turned and looked at him with the innocent and somewhat vacuous stare which had learned its utility in a great variety of services jeff only meant it as a disguise but the general thought it impudent dollars sir said jeff coolly it will pay me that in time in a thousand years roared the general 
the amalgamated doesn't figure on millenniums mr ray we don't want your other interests but we'll buy them for five million dollars in cash and not a cent more you can sell at that price or the general did not see or refuse to see the warning glance from janey or be wiped off the map is that clear i think so sir said ray politely will you excuse me mr janey and bowed himself out of the room End of chapter ten